African governments are falling over themselves to set up sovereign wealth funds. Nigeria and Angola recently announced they've joined the likes of Libya, Algeria and Botswana, with Kenya and Tanzania ready to follow suit. The idea sounds good in principle. Protect the revenues from your natural resources by putting them in the hands of expert investors. But can it work in practice? That's what we'll be asking this week on Africa Today. In recent months, Angola and Nigeria have announced the launch of sovereign wealth funds, which will be topped up by oil revenues and invested in a range of industries, both at home and abroad. Although the initial seed money is modest, at $5 billion and $1 billion respectively, it's hoped that they will one day rival the more established funds built up by Libya and Algeria. They've amassed war chests of $65 billion and $56.7 billion respectively, while Botswana's built up a $7 billion diamond fund. Other African countries, including Kenya and Tanzania, say they may set up similar vehicles to protect monies that flow in from recent resource discoveries. Many analysts welcome this trend, saying it will prevent Africa's riches from being squandered by selfish leaders and may see more intra-African investment like that promoted by Libya. But others warn that such funds can be notoriously secretive and may lack accountability for the investment decisions they make. This week's Africa Today will be asking, are sovereign wealth funds an answer to Africa's resource cares or are they just another way of keeping the continent's money in as few hands as possible? Hello, I'm Henry Bonsu and this is Africa Today. For years, African activists have protested to anyone who'll listen, we're not the poorest continent, we're the richest. But it's one thing pointing to huge reserves of oil, gas, gold, copper and diamonds, quite another investing the proceeds wisely. Now African governments are claiming they've learned from the past by setting up sovereign wealth funds, which in Ghana's case will receive 30% of oil revenues to invest at home and abroad. It sounds good, but not everyone's happy. Some Nigerian state governors say oil revenue belongs to the people and shouldn't be handed over to a committee which will decide what to invest in. Other analysts worry about transparency. How will people know what's being done in their name? Let's discuss this with Chidi Obahara, who is Chief Executive Officer of Diolan Agency, it's an investment agency, and Bekele Teklu, a political activist and member of the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party. Welcome to both of you. Good afternoon. I want to start off with you, uh, Chidi Obihara. I'm just looking at the list of countries, you know, Algeria, Angola, Botswana, Equatorial, Guinea, Gabon, Ghana, Mauritania, Nigeria, your own Nigeria. Um, we have uh, the Libyans as well. I mean, it looks very, very exciting. But are you excited? I am. I think it's, a, it's an excellent development in the sense that it allows many countries the opportunity to focus um, their development needs or focus the needs of uh, the political classes in dealing with unexpected revenue flows and expected surpluses in a way that is consistent with longer term development goals. So, yes. so are you saying this is different from how a government would usually use uh, anything that comes from say, oil revenues, gas, because government in, in itself won't be in charge of how the money is invested. Um, I'm saying something similar to that, okay. but if I could put it in my own words, what I would say is that the, the streams of revenues that countries get vary with time. Sometimes it's high and sometimes it's low. And the way a government deals with that is very important because it has an impact on the stability of the economy going forward. If you don't do anything when your revenues go up, monies are, are wasted in inflation, in projects that don't sort of yield any benefits for the broader population, and don't follow what you plan to do. If you, if you pull a, a well-structured sovereign wealth fund together, you can actually help yourself uh, focus on your long-term goals by using the monies that come in in a systematic way. Now, there are many ways of doing this, and there yeah. are many kinds of entities that are called sovereign wealth funds, but uh, most of them share the one thing in common, that they are backed by their own governments, either local, state, or federal, and that their goals are aligned to what the people who live there want. All right, uh, Chidi, for the moment, thank you very much. Bekele Teklu, your country, Ethiopia, at the moment doesn't have a sovereign wealth fund, and I'm not hearing any great enthusiasm at the moment from Addis Ababa for one. Does that disappoint you? 
Uh, in the first place, let me just explain a little bit about the SWF, the uh, Wells Fund. In general, I mean, the landscape in Africa is very, very small. Uh, if we take the 2011 data in total, in aggregate, uh, Africans reserve is negative 0 0.6. Look, there are competing needs in Africa. There are a lot of infrastructure to be done in Africa. Compared to this, you know, I am not seeing that the, uh, this works. On top of that... Why would you have a problem with a sovereign wealth fund um, managed by Nigerians from Lagos um, maybe saying to the Ethiopians, um, we have a surplus from our oil receipts this year. Yeah. We're going to invest in that major dam outside Addis Ababa or yeah. this road of running from Addis to, um, I don't know, any other city you want to go. Yes. And if you can't do it, we will fund that. We will invest in that. Okay. I mean, the, the, these funds are, in the first place, out of the normal government budget and asset management. They are not properly managed by the government, rather by experts. Right. In most cases, these funds are not regulated funds. They are hidden assets. And sometimes they might have an interest on a strategic, uh, uh, strategic um, mm -hmm. Uh, resources uh, such as telecommunications and, and, and so on. On top of that, there is a, what you mentioned, transparency. Because if these this, this resources might be mostly the malicious and d with dictators, unaccounted for, so there might be unregulated uh, thing to go in there, which, which, which definitely affects so the So you think this is a very country. bad trend, do you? Um, ah, yes, I am, I, am, I am critical of that. One, from both sides, from the creation side, there are competing needs in Africa, rather than you know, taking their part of fund out of the normal budget means, especially social infrastructure, yeah. education and the else. Is there a good health well, Let me put that to Chidi Obihara. In your own country, in Nigeria, the launch of the Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Fund has been hampered by opposition, political opposition, from um, some of the 36 state governors who say, hang on, this belongs to the people. This is unconstitutional. Um, it should be invested here in Nigeria, and the people should have a say, not just be hived off to a committee of experts who are not accountable. That, that would be a valid criticism um, of any entity that tried to invest a, a country's money. Um, if I sort of try and weave in both what I said and what my uh, co-panelist has, has said, yeah. the, the issues of transparency and governance are extremely important. And they do determine uh, whether or not a sovereign wealth fund or any other fund, for that matter, can add value to its constituents. Now, to burrow down to the specific example you raised yeah. of Nigeria and the challenge of balancing out the competing political needs of the federal governments and the state governments. Uh, my understanding is that the federal account in Nigeria, which is the account into which revenues, oil revenues primarily flow, uh, has 52% of its um, sort of composition handed to the federal government. Now, the argument in Nigeria is that the state governments do not want to have an even smaller percentage of that federal account if more funds are diverted to the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Yeah. Now, this is a, 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 a constitutional argument that's starting to affect this particular vehicle because the argument is about the difference between federal policy and federal regulation, federal finance and federal structures and state structures. Now, in, in my opinion, there are ways uh, of making those two things work better together. And what's already happened, for example, as you mentioned, is that the Governing Council uh, has all 36 state governors on it. So there is absolute transparency for them. Uh, there are, there's a finance minister, there are, I think, 18 other members. There are youth leaders, there are civic members also on the committee. So the transparency is being put really at the forefront in the case of Nigeria. I think with both transparency and with clear, methodical, um, hard-working leadership, sovereign wealth funds can add a lot of value. In Nigeria's case, they have a, a superstar banker who's an ex-Goldman Sachs 
uh, man who's who's leading the organisation. It's Uche Orji. That's that right. That, that's yes. correct. Appointed um, managing director in October, and now looking for a chief investment officer. Um, Three hundred applications for the position so far <laughs> being submitted. I suspect <laughs> Bikelu Tekulu has not put in his application because he doesn't <laughs> believe in all of this. But the key thing is the priorities for this. A leader, this chief investment officer, whoever he or she is, what should they be looking to fund? Because Bekele has said there are so many needs within each African country. Look at the infrastructure problems in Nigeria. What's to stop this chief investment officer and the committee from deciding to invest in a football club in Italy or in uh, the UK instead of looking at infrastructure needs in Nigeria? I'm with you. Well, there are um, a number of safeguards and a fairly descriptive act from which the Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Fund specifically is drawn. And in that act, 20% of the fund is supposed to go to an intergenerational fund, which is supposed to help uh, future generations of Nigerians. Um, another 20%, at least another 20% of the fund, is supposed to go to a stabilization fund, which is supposed to compensate for fluctuations in the price of oil. And the third um, sort of section of the fund, again, at least 20%, is supposed to fund infrastructure development within Nigeria. Now, those three funds, as I say, all have a minimum of 20% composition of the overall uh, fund, but the chief executive and the chief investment officer have the opportunity to vary those compositions. Right. Um, now, within that context, though, because of the governance structure that's placed on top of this, you'd imagine that there has to be a certain amount of voting and unanimity before these projects take place. The big question is scrutiny. I mean, even the Libyan Investment Fund, which is, of course, Africa's wealthiest, um, it's often accused of secrecy. At the same time, though, in its favor, it has invested significant amounts of money in Zimbabwe, for example, mm -hmm. in other African countries. Isn't that a positive thing? Oh, no. Uh, this is it. Uh, now, the transparency, to come back to transparency, uh, African governments are mostly dictators. Mm -hmm. They are known for their corruption. Well, not, most out, of them are not out, dictators uh, yeah, yeah, Most of them have been flow. elected. Most we, of them have been elected now. We, 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 no, still, uh, the New Economic Foundation data, I mean, prove that a lot of money is outflowing from, from, from Africa. That means the corruption is widespread in, in, in Africa. So the fact that they are selected doesn't guarantee that they are transparent. How is the election taking place? For instance, if you go to Ethiopia, oh, the existing, the, the government in place said, OK, 96 or 99 percent of the population elected me, which is completely false. All right, well, let me run you know, uh, a you know, number so of... You know, so the, fact, of, that, yeah. Yeah, the okay. fact that they are elected doesn't guarantee All right. that they will be OK from... Corruption. We'll allow you to develop some arguments in just a moment. We just okay. want to see what um, okay. some of our uh, viewers have been saying via Facebook, text message, emails, etc. Lots of different ways of getting in touch with us. First of all, we have a comment from Shinji uh, who says, uh, yes, as in to our question about sovereign wealth funds, it's a solution only if there is transparency. Africa needs to protect its wealth. Africa also needs to make sure money from the wealth fund is banked locally and used to lift the masses out of poverty. However, this alone will not solve the problem of poverty. The African masses need to expect more from their governments and force their governments to be transparent and accountable. Another Facebook message from Niazi. Niazi says, it would be disastrous for Mozambique to set up wealth funds. We have too much international debt, no budgetary surpluses, and a large share of the state budget is still financed by foreign grants and loans. And finally, Arjana says, isn't it ironic that Tanzania has decided to set up a sovereign wealth fund just hours before further significant gas discoveries were announced? Keep your thoughts flowing to us. Email africa at presstv.co.uk and text to plus four four seven eight double zero double zero eight zero eight six and Facebook fan page Africa Today, comma Press TV London. Let me go back to you, Bekele Teklu. Now, yeah. you are politically opposed to the sovereign wealth funds, but if you look at the OPEC countries, yeah, the Organization of Oil Exporting Countries, yeah. virtually all of them have sovereign wealth funds. Uh, China has a sovereign wealth fund. I mean, a lot of these countries are very, very serious about how they use the surplus from their income, the resources, and invest it somewhere because they're thinking about future generations and keeping at arm's length from government. And if the uh, leader, political leader of a country is a dictator, but the sovereign wealth fund is at arm's length from him, surely that's protecting the people's revenues, isn't it? 
Yes. Yes. The countries you mentioned, you know, they have got excessive surplus non-renewable resource and foreign exchange reserve. So the fact that the, they have the money means, you know, investing mostly in, uh, you know, in other countries to, to bring in more resources, to bring in more, more, more currencies. For instance, in Ethiopia, in Ethiopian case, there are a lot of money going in, flowing in. Uh, all these development funds are siphoning off resources rather than replenishing the existing resources. The opposite is t -t 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 true. On top of that, I will go back to my argument. Africa needs a lot to do for its people. Yeah, but, Especially uh, so, but in terms some people of, argue that uh, yeah. uh, the establishment of these sovereign wealth funds, I mean, look at Botswana's war chest, I mean, you know, built up on these mineral resources and they're saying it's worth nearly seven billion US dollars. They could be investing in countries around Africa, yeah. increasing intra-African investment and trade instead of expecting the Indians, the Chinese, the Turks, the Americans to come in with their foreign direct assistance and investment investing in other African countries. Botswana can look around the continent at 53 others and say, yes, that's a good thing, surely. I agree with that. Rather than, you know, in investment coming from out, you know, in, in the first place, the surplus, my, I am critical about the surplus. Why? The reserve, because Nigeria, it has an oil uh, resource. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Russia, uh, Nigeria is developed in terms of infrastructure? I mean, Nigeria pumps 2.9 million barrels of oil a day, and yeah. uh, I mean, it relies on oil uh, for 95% of its foreign yeah. exchange income. Yeah. I mean, this is massive. Yeah. Is there, is there uh, the social infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, or are all in, in good place? Well, Chidi, I mean, in terms of human development indices, is right. there any further development, living standard of the population and so on? Okay, let me, let me put that to Chidi. I mean, Nigeria grown by, I think, 6% last year. That's right, isn't it? Nigeria's economy well, grew. I, I read 7.8, but so we seven point eight. about this. But, but at the same this. time, um, you know, indicators show that something like 70% of Nigerians um, live on, I mean, you may not like to quote these figures, but 1.25 US dollars a day. And Bekele is saying, well, you know, you've had all these oil resources, you haven't invested it wisely. I mean, who's to assume that um, any new vehicle will do a better job? Okay. I'm going to try and answer that in, in sort of three, three basic sort mm -hmm. of uh, points. Uh, the first point is that, yes, you are correct. Uh, Nigeria has, the World Bank figure I read a while ago was 42% uh, of the Nigerian population lives on below a dollar a day. Right. So a very high p poverty rate. Um, and it's something that is a priority for any government and any policymaker who looks at the country should definitely be thinking about raising uh, the, the, the tens of millions of Nigerians who live in poverty out of that situation. Having said that, the sovereign wealth fund that's being proposed is one instrument, one instrument alone for doing that. There's a whole plethora of government policy options. And sort of focusing on that, we currently have a billion dollars as a seed fund for a sovereign wealth fund which will uh, help develop infrastructure, uh, help develop uh, intergenerational equity, save for the future, and help stabilize incomes for 160 million people. So I'll just say that again so it's clear. It's $1 billion and it's 160 million people. Now, $1 billion isn't really a huge vote of confidence. <laughs> well, I, 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 think, I think that's, a, a, that's the point I'm driving at, which is yeah. that you don't need to be a mathematician to work out that that's something of the order of 5 or $6 per person. Yeah. Now, when you review sovereign wealth funds across even just our continent, you don't have to go around the world. I think the Libyan sovereign wealth fund had a $65 billion base yeah. on a 6 million population, mm -hmm. something of that order, um, from last year or the year before, which gave them approximately um, $10,000 per individual, round numbers. Um, so you see that as a policy instrument, in the case of Libya, the Sovereign Wealth Fund can make a much bigger difference to its individual citizens than the Nigerian one can at the minute, which goes to address the point about how the Sovereign Wealth Fund will help alleviate problems in Nigeria. Now, that's, that's the first of three points I have to make. The second uh, really important point is that when you try and understand the issues of transparency and governance 
um, you need to understand that in Nigeria's case, ours was pre-designed by very capable people, I won't name names, but the, the, the act that sets up Nigeria's sovereign wealth fund is extremely prescriptive. But I mean, I remember when a Nigeria moved from military dictatorship to um, constitutional democracy. free democracy yes. back in 1999, and the Nigerians were saying, this is the best constitution anywhere in the world. We've looked at all the constitutions and we've designed the best. Go to Nigeria, now you've still got a lot of Nigerians complaining that the constitution says great things, but look at how I'm living. So that really isn't that much of a fail-safe, what you're saying, Well, well I, I don't think you can use the Constitution as uh, the only reason or the primary reason even why Nigeria has an issue with poverty. There's a, yeah. there's a, there's a whole bunch of no, issues. It's about go that, governance, governance It's about well. governance in general, yeah. which was the second point I was trying to make, which is that, uh, that you can structure sovereign wealth funds in different ways, but the Nigerian sovereign wealth fund has been structured in a way that you have an extremely inclusive governing body, so there is that transparency, so that there is a, f a much lower risk of a dictator stepping in All right. and causing problems in the future. Now, the, the last point very I want briefly, to make, please. very <laughs> briefly, uh, in response to, to this issue, is that as far as Africa is concerned and sovereign wealth funds are concerned, I think as in May last year, the total estimated amount of assets held by, by sovereign wealth funds was $5 trillion. Yeah. Uh, the Africans have about Two hundred. Zero point three percent. Exactly. Yeah. Which no, is so, really, so, really, no, which three is really percent exactly. Three percent is exactly. Very, very which low. Is, which is very low. So we have a okay. long way to go. Right. I need before, to bring Beckley back in before, we're told we, this is before wrong. we finish. Um, if not sovereign wealth funds, if you think they're not the right vehicle, then what is? Okay. Because some of these countries are going to get very, very wealthy over a period of time. Ghana, for example, mm -hmm. the oil is there. They're worried. They don't want to follow some bad examples. So what is the right way? Uh, okay, uh, l uh, there is one thing which, which we had, uh, there is one thing which I didn't mention. Okay. This reserve also might entail, you know, obviously entail uh, a state capitalism, which might crowd out the private sector as well, competing with the private sector as well. So now coming back to your you haven't got long yes okay coming back back, back, back back to your question the solution is the government the government can invest first on physical and social infrastructure yeah. in its own country yeah. to try to reduce the outflow all right thank you very much indeed both of you for joining us and that's it for today thanks to all of you who've sent in calls email africa at press tv .co .uk or text us to plus four four seven eight double zero double zero eight zero eight six messages will be charged at your local operator rates many thanks to our guests chidi obihara and bekele teklu join us next week for another edition of africa today till then it's goodbye from me and on behalf of the whole team thanks again for watching <laughs>